I'm Véronique. And I'm Sylvia. Welcome to the High Vibes and the Mind podcast. Where multicultural moms connect. Everyone, this is Veronique and Sylvia. We're back for our podcast High Vibes in the Mic. So, today we have a guest, and on, her name is Laura. She's a published uh, publish author, she's a speaker, award winning advocate, a podcaster, she's a teacher and experience rooted healer, seeker, and she's a natural born, multi generational, intuitive spiritual mentor. So Laura was born as an empath and struggled for most of her life, understanding what it meant to be an empath, experienced many difficult life lessons that resulted in uh, complex PTSD and trauma. And so Laura had a feeling there was something wrong with her until she rediscovered her gift and learned to embrace her sensitivities, which led her down this path. She has published many articles on the topics of holistic health, spirituality, reflections from a spiritual medium, healing trauma associated with abuse and Reiki. Today we're going to learn a, a lot about um, this kind of gift of being an empath. Let's talk with Laura. Hey Laura, so can you tell us a little bit about your background? And You mentioned in your bio that you went through some tough times. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, um, I'm a multi-generational, multidisciplinary healer and intuitive. And, you know, I think it took the last traumatic event, which was a big one, that really kind of forced me to go back into who I was, so to speak. Um, I think growing up in the 80s, I always knew and um, I mean, I almost got kicked out of Catholic school in second grade because it was like, hey, I'm going to pray for my, my grandfather. He died of a heart attack, but he dropped out a week later, you know, and, and so it became like this whole thing. And I didn't really understand my gift because it really wasn't like in my and it really actually came from my my dad's mother, who was Russian, Russian immigrant. So it came from that lineage. And. Um, it really wasn't like hidden, so to speak, because the relationship with plants and the relationship with animals and all those things were very prevalent. But I think, you know, also it's like this, it's, know, it's like this duality, like we just came back from Ireland and we talk a lot about this duality. So on one aspect, it wasn't really talked about. On the other aspect, it's shown all over the place. So, um, you know, so when it came to the, the last traumatic event, which was not so much leaving a domestic violence relationship, but it was going to the system that says there are laws to protect me and my children only to be faced with family court abuse. And technically I'm not free until September, 2020, 24. And I left him in 20, in 2005. So almost 20 years later, and I was only married to him nine. And, and then, so, um, you know, I think it, you know, I started realizing, I started seeing a separation in me. Like when I was in certain environments, I'm like, who is this person? And then compared to like when I was faced with him and, you know, I think I was brought up like, you know, you truth shall prevail, tell the truth and there's laws to protect you. And, um, not realizing that the courts don't have to abide by the law because there's really no oversight with family court judges. They can also incarcerate you indefinitely for an undetermined amount of time with no just cause. And there's the ACLU. None of those organizations will touch the family court. There's no lawyer that will touch family court to go after corrupt judges. There's no way to remove the corrupt judge. We're trying to right now um, with a judge who really has it out for 100% of mothers regardless of the severity of domestic violence, including one of the cases I has come across, um, the father's actually being criminally charged for a child sexual assault. And the judge didn't care and tried to bypass the criminal court judge's order of no contact with children by trying to give him custody of the children. And so <laughs> this, is, this is the debauchery. Um, and we just... 
you know, last year I testified on 11 bills in the state of Massachusetts, and it really gave me a glimpse of what systemic oppression really looks like um, from a female and standpoint. And I mean, they incarcerated me in attempts to silence me, and they kept trying to do it until I learned from the advice of a lawyer to basically start saying, I'm not going to answer your questions until you appoint me a lawyer. You are trying to incarcerate me. You are threatening me with six months incarceration. And I am I'm asserting my rights under the Constitution. Duality of here is this horrible thing that happened to me. But then how do I still thrive? Because I also knew he wins. My abuser wins if I somehow don't find a way to thrive in spite of what's being thrown at me. I mean, I haven't seen my kids since 2011. I haven't seen my grandson. Um, I didn't even know what my youngest looked like until about a year and a half ago because I hadn't seen her since she was like five. So even though he was found guilty of violating 90% of the visitation orders and, vi- you know, the, the, there was case precedent that should have automatically reversed custody. This is the whole thing. And then, you know, I think I had to really do a lot of soul searching because people say to me, like, they look at me and they hear my story and they go, how do you survive? How do you do this? Let's see your kids. How do you do that? I go, if I cave, he wins. I'm still working on my kids. I'm working on the ancestral healing piece. I, whether I ever see my kids again, I am still influencing their DNA. Yes. And I'm hoping if you believe in reincarnation, I'm trying to set something up. We don't repeat the shit show again in another life. And so there's a lot of like all these different things. So I try to see things from the bigger picture. And so a lot of this really forced me to do some deep remembering and, and really reclaim a lot of the pieces that were lost or stolen from me and my ancestors on all three sides, the Celtic, the Irish, the Germ- the uh, Russian, and the Ukrainians. And um, so it's been a 20-year journey. You're seeing like what I just gave you is an abridged 20-year journey of reclamation. And um, people think, uh, we were just talking, <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other, earlier today about the the plus and the downside, again, the duality of even social media is now anybody can become a guru if you just buy your certificate online and you have a fancy and and an indisposable income to put fancy shit online. And now you're a guru and there's no, like there are, I, I, I tell all my students and I tell everybody who attends events with me that works with me, I said, everybody I know who actually has the medicine to offer they are not on social media. Hear this clearly, people, if you're Thank listening. Thank you. Like, this is they so are not true. on social media. 100%. Every single elder I work with, if they are, it's like because they're part of a group that's promoting something, but they're not in there, in your face, all fancied up in goddess gear and fancy jewelry <laughs> with perfect fucking hair. Excuse my language. <laughs> but that is not because I see that every day. I know. And I go, yes. you know what? I don't know how much money and time they spend polishing up these videos and making them all like, like productions, but that's not reality. Like even the people we hired in, in Ireland, like we're in like our, our sloggy boots and our leggings and our hair trying to keep up, not getting wet. And yeah, do I have some makeup on? But it's not overdone. Like it is what it is. I got the, I've been wearing these. I went to Ireland, big fucking deal. You know, this is pewter. Like it's not fancy stuff. It just is. This became like our little symbol, you know, even though it's Irish, you know, and, but it kept showing up for us in the group. So, you know, how that shows up, interestingly, I think there's going to be a new logo that I'm creating because I, my degree is actually in art and design. So that might be somehow tying this type of motif in there because I have been doing a lot of swirlies even before I went to Ireland and I've been tying it to like snakes and, and all these things. I'm like, I really didn't like snakes. Why are snakes? And then when you really look at like the roots to snakes, like, okay, Ireland, St. Paddy's Day, everybody goes out and gets drunk. Yes. 
you know it's like <laughs> hey it's a good day to party and celebrate the irish culture yeah it has some goodness and i'm gonna be irish for the day well no let's really look at it i you know saint patrick drove out the snakes what did he really drive out he drove out the goddess and feminine power snakes are routinely connected with feminine power and healing and so that's kind of you know again i'm kind of going off track but this is like all these little tentacles that weaved and really over the last 20 years it's been deep remembering so yeah my pages aren't going to be polished i don't have a hundred thousand followers but the followers that follow me are people that actually want to work with me they're not like bots that i bought in a bot farm and you know and all that other stuff and because to be honest with you i'm here for the medicine i'm not here to gain followers and likes you know, even though they're nice, don't get me wrong, I have my human moments. But at the end of the day, I remember, go back to the medicine, go back to what you came here to do. Because if that is your focus, you're missing the medicine. And I always look at when I see these polished po you know, posts, and I go, how long did it take you to put together that? Or how much money did you spend? And how much are you actually dedicating and doing ceremony actually every day? And actually sitting with the very people you claim to be talking about that you do. Because for me, it's like, you know, it's a dance because I am self-employed. So yeah, I get it. I have to do some social media and it's, but it's the not, they're not the most polished. <laughs> they're not the most pristine. Sometimes and I'm like, you know what? I don't have time to edit this. I'm just putting it as is. I don't give a fuck. Like if people are going to get it or they're not like, you know, so much <laughs> work, it. right? It takes a lot of your time. To do all well, these things on know, social media. I, we we did we did the only one where I put a lot of work in is I we hired this guy. He's like 95 years old. He's known as a legend in this small town in Ireland. And he's like a walking encyclopedia and a walking historian. He knows anything and everybody, including he was sitting there in somebody's car. They walked in, sat in, and he's like, I'm not getting off. I taught him in such and such a grade and such and such a year. He can wait. And I'm just sitting there laughing, going like, this is fucking fantastic, right? And to me, like, just like any elder, I mean, I had two elders. One I cherished very much last year that passed away. And I'm like, they're a dying breed. And we need to really harness that medicine because those of us, and I, and I was reminded while I was in Ireland, I'm an emerging elder, you know, even though I feel like I'm old as fuck, but, you know, but I'm not there. I'm, I, I am only in my fifties. So I, yes, I am a grandmother, but I'm, I'm an emerging elder and I go, okay. So if I'm entering that phase, how am I going to use my medicine? And how am I going to use my voice for systems of oppression? Like when I first started doing drum circles in my space and, or doing women's circles and they go, Oh, you're doing this native American thing. Like, this is so great. And I'm like, well, let's just stop for a second. So I only bring in things that I've been approved or I feel comfortable doing. Most of it's coming in from my lineage that I try to channel and all the rest of it is done either that's appropriated and in the proper way, even I get given permission but one of the things that if you're we're going to do anything Native American, we're also going to address how Native Americans are still being persecuted right now in certain states. We're going to talk about Standing Rock. We're going to address all those because we can't have their medicine without also addressing the harm that they're still experiencing today. We can't have one without the other. I just did this uh, last week. Somebody hired me to do, which to me was beautiful, that they thought this was a beautiful gift. Somebody turned 60. And the way of honoring the matriarch of their family was they hired me to facilitate a 60th birthday party. Everything we did, everything from spirit messages, we, I, I put together and cultivated um, in lieu of a cacao ceremony, we did herbal teas that I cultivated and harvested and explained to them why I don't do cacao ceremonies, saying that I am not black and brown indigenous and some of those tribes, especially in Guatemala, are currently being persecuted. And if I cannot have a direct link to the tribes, I'm not going to do it because a certain percentage of the money should be going back. And it's not. Or else we're just appropriating and gentrifying. And so it became a slight education. 
And then I made all these other little things I put into a goodie bag. And then we did a gong bath and meditation with the Tibetan bowls. And they got to pull cards. And it became this beautiful hour and a half thing, including the youngest participant was like six months old. <laughs> that was amazing. And That's so cute. this is like how it weaves, I guess. And I kind of went long winded on that answer. <laughs> all these oh, different tentacles kind of goes in. <laughs> So There's a lot you, back there. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what the but, trauma is. It's like face your mm -hmm. shit, do the work, don't bypass, and turn your triggers into a power. And when you do that, life works for you differently. And that's kind of I I I have a firm belief that I don't talk my talk, I walk my talk. Because when I do that, life is actually easier. I don't have to pretend, I don't have to put on a mask. It just is. <laughs> Yeah. So how can we heal from like patterns, old patterns and, you know, like trauma or family trauma that we've been through? Or how can you help someone heal so, those wounds? That's kind of like a loaded question because there is not one path for, that's right. the same for everybody. It really depends on where you are in your journey. Some people um, have done a lot of work and they just need somebody to help them with the pieces that they're not seeing. You know, like maybe going on a pilgrimage, like we just came back from a pilgrimage where, you know, the group that we were with got to have me for 10 days of nonstop mentoring and tweaking and holding space and then going to sacred sites and then helping them to cultivate what they're hearing from their ancestors, what they're hearing from the spirits and holding that container. And some of the things I witnessed was beautiful. Other times it's okay. We really have to go down to basics. So it's, watching the language, finding other people who can help you somatically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually help you make transitions until you can start really going down into the bigger picture. But it's really finding those that can support you that have enough training, qualifications, and experience, and those who have walked the path enough to know how to help you pivot. So that's it's it's not like the same for everybody if you're right in the beginning a lot of times what i find is how is the language the frequency the vibration showing up as illness and disease in your body or chronic pain let's just go there and then once we have gotten there and you've cleared those things that's actually going to be a gateway to know where to go next. So this, it's not like an easy, oh, this is where you go, that's where you go. Everybody is on a different different frequency right now. So really just for me, it's knowing how to tap in, staying in the lane of where I'm at, knowing how to refer somebody and say, you need to go back to your doctor and talk, talk to them about X, Y, and Z. Oh, we need to call in an acupuncture. So we need to call in this person to help support. Um, and I just had, I mean, I just had a client that, um, we did some of this work, this ancestral stuff. She came to me actually with stage four breast cancer at the age of 29, was told that her basically her life was over. And, and I have permission, by the way, to share this. I actually have it posted on my Instagram. <laughs> so, um, and basically her life was over. It was even traumatized by another healer by being told that her sexual trauma wasn't a real trauma. Her sexual assault that she incurred when she was in college was not a real trauma. And so fast forward, putting systems in place, right? Her work life, what she's sensitive to, life strategies, mindset, you know, other things, and really going to work on that. Four years later, was given permission to try to have children. And they decided to go uh, egg implant only because she was a breast cancer, you know, risk. So they went that for the fastest route. And the first egg didn't take. And I said, nah, because it's not going to happen now. Something about September. And I, and I had a Freudian slip and said multiples, not twins. September comes. And not only was she pregnant, but with one egg implant, she was pregnant with, with triplets. And she just delivered about a month ago. Triplets. Oh, my God. A boy, <laughs> yes, a boy and two girls. Healthy. Ooh. And they were all shocked at, how did you do it? How did you stay so calm? Like, how, how do you, like. You know, the babies were all above weight for that term in pregnancy, you know, and so she exceeded every expectation. And I said, it's because one, you were coachable and two, you did the work. You did the work. And it's just beginning like that cancer thing 
taught you how to prepare for the bigger thing. And that's toxic cultural issues, toxic capitalism and all these other things. So like she's now coming in from a different lens of how am I going to rear my three babies in a system differently? And now she's seeing all these other things. So to me, it was a beautiful approach, but it's, it's not the same for everybody. Some people, you have to go right down to basics and face the health issues because you can't get past that without that. Others, it's okay. Well, yeah. Is it the mental thing? Are you, are you stuck to the labels that you've been diagnosed with? Or are you really willing to address the root issues and what's really the trigger? So it's, it's addressing the trigger. What's really the issue? That's just triggering you. <laughs> that issue is just triggering you. What's the real issue going on? <laughs> and where is it showing up and how is it showing up? And then all of those are going to give you a clue on what the medicine is on how to move forward. Is it, do you need herbal support? Do you need energetics? Do you need mindset? Do you, do you need, like, what is it that you need? But it's, it's not like as easy of an answer to say, oh, well, this is what you can do. And that's what you can do. It's not easy like that. It's really not. Yeah. <laughs> you just mentioned uh, the root issue. Is it for you that the real issue that they are dealing with compared to what maybe doctors are telling them or a psychologue would tell them and they come to you and you're looking for the real issue? Yeah. So I was, I mean, again, I'm a multi-generational healer and intuitive. So my father, my father was an osteopathic physician. So he taught me everything I knew for basically my whole life on preventative healthcare. We worked side by side in a medical office for over 15 years, um, professionally. And, um, taught me a lot about how to look for different things, what, what his philosophy was, you know, 80% of your diagnosis comes from listening and touching the pace, all of these different things. Right. And so I always came in from that. Well, what is the root issue? And I even at one point facilitated and did all the food and environmental sensitivity screens for, in his office, and then would give him the results for the diagnosis. And so that's really addressing, you got an earache. Well, what might be causing it might be in your gut. So like, this is what I always was raised with and knew. So what might be causing your earache or what might be causing your back pain may not be your back pain. It might be something else, right? So, um, you know, like this person with the breast cancer, it was multi multitude of, of not just one thing, vitamin D deficiency, EMFs from cell phones. When she realized when we started addressing that aspect, she's like, oh my God, when I was in college, I kept my cell phone right here, yeah. right where the cancer yeah. was. Okay. So it's not, was just one answer. And then the third component was the sexual assault. So there hasn't been one person I have seen that hasn't had uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, or any kind of reproductive cancer, including breast cancer that hasn't been a survivor of some form of abuse or violence, including sexual assault, child abuse, or um, domestic violence. Now, trauma training says there's ACE scores, so which we're not going to go into, but there's this predictive measures. And so our system never addresses root issues. They only treat band-aids and symptoms, right? So, hey, I got an earache. Well, here's this straw, put it in here and maybe it will get better. Meanwhile, you're not addressing this thing. And next thing you know, you're on steroids and you're on these other things. And then next thing you know, you're getting side effects from that, right? So this is like, you know, this pattern. So for me, it's root issues is what is what your symptom is? What's really the cause? And is it, oh, geez, you know, I've got anxiety. Well, what's really causing that? Well, this person said this. Well, what is that really about? Is it about you not having a voice? Is it about you having pain in your chest? Well, what's that really about? And so we start to unravel and it's different for everybody. Sometimes it's an old trauma or maybe they never had a voice. They go, well, you know, they never identified as being a survivor of abuse growing up as a child because they knew that their parents did the best they can. But then they realize after we start unraveling and unpacking a lot of things, oh, well, you know what? I never really had a voice because my mother didn't even know how to handle her own trauma because, again, it was part of a culture of, you know, be seen and not heard, right? And not having a place to go to deal with it or not knowing how to deal with it. So maybe you didn't raise your kids the best way you, you probably could have, but that wasn't necessarily your fault, right? So there's like all these different layers. Now you're dealing with child neglect, child, uh, emotional abuse, and you know, uh, 
generational trauma, right? So you've got all these different layers. And then it's okay, well, how is it showing up in the body? Is it a pain? Do you have chronic illness? Do you, mm -hmm. have, do you have like breathing issues? Do you have a cardiac issue? Do you have diabetes? You know, do you have pain in your hips? Feel like, you know, geez, I can't move forward. So it's, it's okay. Well, what is that really about? So I've learned, like, I used to put together like this three-legged stool analogy. It's you're the three-legged stool. That's the whole you, the mental you, the emotional you, the physical you, the spiritual you. And if you're working on, well, I want to get better. What does that really mean? I don't want to have the pain anymore. Okay, well, how is it showing up mentally and emotionally? How is it showing up spiritually? How is it showing up physically? And if you're only working on one of those bodies or two, how is the stool supposed to stand? It can't. So unless you show address how it's showing up in each one of these bodies, you're never going to become whole. Right. Yeah. And I think that is that mm -hmm. is kind of how I go down. I go down through like a system of, you know, both like I always say, let's address the physical things because that's the easiest. Like diet. Um, are you eating? Are you eating at McDonald's every day? Let's address the obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. OK, because once we get past that, then you're left with now the real crux of what the real issues are. It's not being clouded by the things that are just environmental. Right. So, or, or maybe it's, you know, maybe you're in an impoverished neighborhood and there's pollution, right? So there's, so there's like, once we get past all that, then we can really address, well, what is the real issue? And I always say the triggers are nothing but a GPS that are going to show you where to go. We're afraid of the darkness. Nobody wants the darkness. But then we go, oh my gosh, look at how beautiful the stars are tonight. Well, geez. <laughs> If you are afraid of the darkness, then you're missing out on the stars because when you're in the darkness, you don't grow in the light. You know, it's so like that toxic positivity crap that we see all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. So because in the light, everything is great. Everything is great. Yeah. Well, geez, plants don't grow. Seeds don't grow. Humans don't grow in the light. They grow in a dark cool you know cocoon in your uterus okay so they don't grow in the sunlight so this is where we have to understand that if you really want to grow and you really want to heal you really want to take back your power you have to face the hard truths you have to do the hard work you have to face the things you don't think you can because when you do the dragon then becomes your friend and ally not your enemy and, and instead of them guarding the gold they're saying here here's a piece of it so it's really reframing how we identify with the dark. And then a lot of it has to do with, that's the religious indoctrination, right? The dark is actually where you get your power back. The dark is actually where you plant the seeds, you cultivate, and you get to see things. You get to see the stars, where they're aligned, so you know where you're going. So when the trigger happens, it's nothing more than a beep, 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 do I turn left or do I turn right? Instead yeah. of being engulfed in it, and then we can't see. It's like a fog that comes over. We can't see the mu the magic that's all around us. That reminds me of a story of um, a Uber. I, I took a, a Uber once, and he was telling me that, oh, you know, you shouldn't sing happy birthday in the dark because it's, uh, you know, you, you're going to age because it comes from an old ancient uh, tradition when people were singing uh, happy birthday in the dark, and then the light is coming. But when you're in the dark, you're going to edge more. So you should sing happy birthday, uh, you know, during the light. Yeah, like, you know, Ooh. do you really edge oh. more? Because one one of the god <laughs> one of the goddesses here's one of the goddesses we worked with in Ireland. Okay, well, two of them, Queen Maeve and the Morrigan, both in the public eye, have been written in history by Christian white monks, male monks. And basically cast out, like even my sister-in-law said to me, she was kind of afraid when I was bringing up the Morgan. She's like, oh, geez, Laura, like, you know, like we've been kind of taught, like she's kind of like connected to the evil dark lords. And I go, no, she's actually not. She's actually the epitome of feminine sovereignty and personal power. And when I started learning about the Celtic goddesses from in, you know, folks that I consider indigenous Irish, one of the things that really stuck out, stuck out with me is they became goddesses because they were sexually assaulted by yeah. a man. And then their way of taking back power 
was, yeah, maybe they beat up, maybe they ripped off his arm, but like, this is what was written, right? Like these vile, so-called vile things, but it was all about reclamation of their power. And so they rose to goddess statter, statue because of this. And it was what they did in the meantime of how do I reclaim that aspect? And the Morgan is the one that I, I always wonder. And I go, geez, like in every Hollywood movie, she's always like painted as like the red witch with the evil king, you know? <laughs> and that's not her at all. But if you really listen to the Morgan, she will give you homework. And she she's like, no joke. If you decide to work with her, she's like the tower card and tarot. She will come in with a wrecking ball and take away everything that doesn't serve you. Because if you really want to work with her and you really are aligned in that way, then be ready to do the, to do the actual work. And so some of these goddesses and spirits, when you that's the other that we go into is being aligned in a way that's respectful, honoring traditions, honoring culture, honoring the integrity behind it. Um, because without it, you just, you're not like, it just doesn't work. Like, you know, it just doesn't work. But um, we saw it in Ireland where Maeve's energy is extraordinarily strong where we went. And, and the beauty and magic, it was the duality of like, look at what we're witnessing. I mean, I had animals out of the blue that, I mean, I was nicknamed Dr. Doolittle growing up and published in the paper twice growing up for saving animals and rehabbing them and things. So I, it's always, it's in the bloodline. It's always been in my family history. So everybody in the group was like shocked to see how, whether it was a lamb that was born a week ago or a head cow telling the rest of the herd to get back. So they're going to check me out, you know, and and it was so beautiful. And in Maeve's kingdom, like that was what was powerful. She had all these beautiful, magical things that were happening, guarding these sacred sites. And at the same time, people that are claiming to be on a spiritual path are defacing graves and sites that are 6,000 years old that weren't defaced in the, by the Vikings or the British conquering or the church. But now in the past year, we have new agers that are going and mining graves that are 6,000 years old for crystals. Like, like, do you realize mm -hmm. how that's going to anger the spirits? Like I've heard this from not so much the Irish, but I've heard it from my Native American friends. And you're like, if you don't show up in an appropriate manner, it doesn't matter what your intent is. Like the spirits don't care what your intent is. I think that we preach like intent all the time, but it's doing the work. How much have you decolonized your, your spiritual practices? How much have you done that work. I feel like I'm still a novice, you know, after 20 years, I feel like I'm just now getting it after 20 years. I'm just now understanding. And so just like when I work with people doing healing stuff, the one thing that goes through, whether you're talking to the spirits or you're working with people, consent and boundaries, consent and boundaries, permissions, consent and boundaries, consent, permissions and boundaries, <laughs> like staying in your lane. I mean, even when you're working with the spirits, asking for permissions, you know, and everything I did over there, I asked permission before I brought people. Is it okay mm -hmm. if I bring bring people? This is what I have in mind. Is this the right thing to do? Is this alignment? Like, is this what you feel that I can offer to you and to be a bridge between the spirit world and those that I'm bringing? Is this the right thing to do? And I got a clear yes. And one of the sites, they said, oh, yes, we want you here, but we don't know if you're going to be able to access us. And then three months later, I could, I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> And then three months later, somebody graffitied Egyptian hieroglyphs on the inside and kicked down one of the supporting pillars to the entrance and, and, and des basically desecrated this site that's 6,000 years old. And that was in, in Ireland? In Ireland, yeah. So it, do we know why they, why they, what they, what they, what was the intent? Why do they do that? I don't know. Um, I don't know the intent. It really um, ached my heart. And... The only thing I can say that I'm doing is to really speak about it, address it, and just, just show people how this is actually going to cause a backlash Like if you do stuff like this. like these, There's a reason why the British and the church and everybody else didn't desecrate these graves. Why they still stood for 6,000 years is because they understood the ceremonial aspect of these places. So there's a big spiritual energy there and support it. And so, 
you know, it may not be like, hey, you're going to be haunted, but it might be that things just don't go right in your life. Like it's, it's, it's called karma, right? So it's, it's what you, if you're doing that and you're causing harm, the spirits aren't going to support you moving forward. Mm. They're just not. They won't. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yes. maybe they should, uh, they should uh, attend your uh, mediumship classes. We have mediumship, medium, uh, uh, ship classes, right? Well, I don't really Can know. anybody enroll? Do you have to be a medium to enroll? Well, I don't really offer mediumship classes anymore. Um, no, oh, yeah. that is, no, you don't? Yeah, I, I mean, I do if it's requested. But when I started going down this path, I felt like I felt like it wasn't aligned. So me doing like what I did in Ireland, being a bridge and really tapping into listening to the spirits of the land, listening to the ancestors, and then bridging it with people's experiences, whether it's ancestral or whether it's a spiritual connection and really bringing in both. So it is kind of bringing in the same skills, like as if I was teaching a mediumship class, you know, so <laughs> It is bringing that in, but it's doing it in a much more rooted way because um, I don't go into any of these places unless we're invited and the spirits say it's okay. And I tell everybody who, who, has, who registered, if we go there and they say, no, not this year, then you have to understand we're not going there, even though I had permission last year, right? So we're not going there because it is what it is. And I'm not going to... We're not going to go back in 2025 unless the spirits and the support team, the indigenous Irish support team in Ireland says, we want you here. And I was, I wasn't sure how it was going to be taken. I just said, if they want me back, then I'll come. That's just how I looked at it. And I was, yeah, I not only have been asked to like come, they want me to stay the whole summer next year. And I go, well, that might not be possible. But, you know, we'll figure something out, um, just logistics. But, um, yeah, it's approaching, you know, it's through the lens with honor, reverence, and respect. And for me, I'm on this path because it's the Irish side, for me, that I have the most broken lineage out of my entire personal lineage. And so even with me leading this, and I, I was very, the land, everything, I mean, I could hear it clearly, but my own ancestors, there's so much trauma because when I bring, if I do bring an ancestral wisdom, I, I, I'm cleared to ask only healed and hold ancestors to come through. And none of mine came through, which, which actually spoke volumes that there's, that I have a lot of work to do on ancestral healing on my Irish side still to this day. So, um, but I have a lot of support there to do it. And I have a lot of support here to do it. So that is kind of how I'm navigating because how I work that then now impacts my children, you know, seven generations forward, seven generations backward. So whether I see my kids again or not, I know I'm still leaving them with a gift, whether they know it or not. Do you know if they have uh, the same gift as you as a, as a medium? Do you know if they are empath or my old? They have well, this see, kind of gift? I, again, I haven't seen them in twelve years, so okay. so, um, no so it's a long time. But so it's eighteen years. So prior to that, yes, my young, my oldest um, did see spirit when she was little. Okay. So I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know where they're at now, or I am concerned that there are some things that have happened. And if my suspicions are right, you know, um, I've seen pictures of semicolons on their hands, and I do question whether one of them or more than one tried to commit suicide. I don't know oh. for sure, but I, so I'm still trying to do mama's work, even though I don't know what has ever been said to them. Maybe some of their own wounds that I know they have, or else they wouldn't have a yeah. semicolon tattooed on their arms. You know, so I just pray someday that they come back. And the only thing I can do is keep deepening my spiritual practice in hopes that I heal whatever is even with their father that doesn't leave a lasting impact in their soul imprint. That's all I can do. And talking about... 
Talking about healing, so what other service do you offer? You know, how can you help um, to help people and how can people contact you if they need to, uh, your services? So I do, um, so sometimes people hire me for their own like retreats or corporate gigs. And like I said, I was just hired for a private birthday. Um, I do, I do retreats. I offer classes and training. Um, I'm an approved teacher out of Kyoto, Japan for the, for uh, Japanese therapy, but my one-on-one -on -one services, um, I do one hour, two hour virtual or in person. I also do a full day or a half day. So somebody feels like they really need, and especially in today's time, sometimes you really need a full day immersion to really, before you can crack open what's really going on. Um, so I offer those, uh, in person. Those I offer in person. It's kind of tough to do virtual one day thing. Um, yeah. uh, so and I'm on almost every social media platform. I'm on TikTok, you know, healing spirit with trauma or healing trauma through spirit and healing with spirit are the two handles that I go by. And, uh, my website's www.laurahealingwithspirit.com. And I think I answered all those questions. I'm also an author of two books. One's called Feisty, yes, Dangerously yeah. Amazing Women mm -hmm. Using Their Voices to Make an Impact. And the other one's called Secrets to Healing. And um, I'm also a podcast host of Triggers and Spiritual Medicine, which is, I think you can find on every major platform if I set it up right. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I will put all the information in the show notes, you know, if people want to contact you, of course. Perfect. Yeah, think, um, yes. <laughs> Sylvia, do you have any other questions you want to add before we go? No, thank you so much, Laura. It was great. A lot of information. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing everything with us. Well, I'm hoping yeah. I'm hoping it makes I always say if I'm gonna trigger somebody, I'm hoping I help them trigger in the right direction, <laughs> not the wrong <laughs> direction. So I'm hoping that it helps your listeners to kind of understand how to focus a little bit more on and how to utilize the triggers maybe a little bit more too. In a in a positive yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because it looks like you work with a lot of people who are in trauma and, and PTSD and things like that. So. Yeah, but you'd be surprised. 80% mm. don't come to me for trauma. They come to me because they have either chronic illness that's not getting better or oh. or a wound from a post op that isn't closing, or they come, I got, you know, knee replacement that didn't take. You know, like I got one person with breast cancer, another person. So they're coming to me for other issues, and then we're finding out it's unhealed trauma as one of the issues, yeah. you know, or an ancestral yeah. wound, you know? So. Yeah. I'm so happy we talk about that. Um, but thank you, Laura, a lot of information, and I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people. I hope so. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for Bye. entertaining me. Yeah. Thank you. No thank you, Laura. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in to High Vibes and a Mic. Until next time, keep learning, growing, and exploring. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.